Okay. Pipes in series. Let us say you have a system in which you have three pipes, okay, of three different diameters connected together. Okay, of course, L1 is much larger. It is just for convenience that we have drawn it this way and you have connected three of them together. Let us say um, Q1, Q2, Q3 are the volumetric flow rates through each pipe. And uh, uh, delta P1, delta P2, delta P3 are the pressure drops across each pipe. Okay, so we have been dealing with a single pipe so far. Now I have connected three of them together. What do we know about Q1, Q2, Q3? The same. So, Q1 is equal to Q2 is equal to Q3. What do we know about delta P1, delta P2, delta P3? There will be individual contributions that will add up to the total pressure drop and therefore, we can say delta P total is equal to delta P1 plus delta P2 plus delta P3. Hmm. So, what is it like? Q is like current and uh, delta P is like your voltage hmm. and the friction losses would have been your really your resistance. <coughs> okay. Question is Q calculate H total. How would you proceed? So, you know, let us say you have this system, okay. You know this is the flow rate that you want to get through the system. What is the pump that you have to select? What will you do? Q is given. That means Q is equal to Q1, equal to Q2, equal to Q3. You know flow rate through each pipe. That means you know V1, V2, V3 velocity through each pipe. You know F1, F2, F3 friction factor in each pipe. You know H1, H2, H3 head loss in each pipe and H total will be simply H1 plus H2 plus H3, right? So, if you have a complex system like that, you could do it for individual pipes and then add up and then find out the total pressure loss. Okay. Of course, I have neglected the expansion and the contraction losses. If you had that, you should have added that also. Hmm? Simple. Given H total calculate Q. Okay. You have this pipes in series, you also have got a pump, you want to know how much you can pump. How will you do? Can you tell? So, I will take Q as a variable, okay. And then, I do not know Q, I need to solve for Q. So, so I assume Q calculate V1, V2, V3. That means I can calculate F1, F2, F3 for some assumed value of Q and therefore I can calculate H1, H2, H3 and calculate an H total as H1 plus H2 plus H3. Check whether H total is as given. If not, go back and correct your Q and you are right, that is the only way to do it, at least that is the one way to do it, okay. So, it has to be an iterative procedure, okay. The equations involved are nonlinear, 
you do not you would not be able to really do anything especially because if you do not know v1 v2 v3 you will not know what reynolds number you are going to operate so you might be probably using laminar you know uh, the 64 by re as the correlation or you have to use anything that will come from moody's chart or any of the other things so a priori you would not even know whether you should worry about your roughness factor or not okay because of that complication it becomes hard so one way to do it would be to start with a q okay calculate and then find out if h total matches if not go back and check it okay and you know how to do these loops and so on you know how to solve a set of nonlinear equations right how would you solve a set of nonlinear equations numerically unless you want to use a MATLAB routine of course you can use the MATLAB routine and do it much simpler so either way okay so it's basically solving a set of nonlinear equations um, for a um, given system that's what it turns out to be hmm? we'll see two more examples uh, tomorrow and then um, then we'll get into boundary layer theory okay any question huh? uh, I don't know. So, if it was all laminar, maybe you can write down an expression and try to simplify and get an expression for Q, but uh, a priori I don't think there is any other way. 